Charge up your time machines and give your grandmother a foot rub because we have a movie that doesn't have an ending. Now explain to me what's going on. Yes, today we'll be looking at See You Yesterday. Today we'll be... Oh, you, you get what I mean. So strap in because here we go. Set in June 2019, See You Yesterday is the story of a young genius, C.J. Walker, who creates a time-traveling machine to stop the murder of her brother Calvin. But like many time-traveling movies, things don't go according to plan. Starting on June 27, 2019, we get our first glimpse of C.J. and Sebastian working on their TRP machines, Temporal Relocation Packs. They work by breaking down their molecular structure, allowing them to travel through a wormhole and reappear in the desired time. The use of wormholes here is especially interesting since C.J. reads Stephen Hawking's A Brief History of Time, which includes discussions of wormholes, time travel, and multiple timelines. The only problem is that these packs only have enough power to send them back one day in the past. That and their first attempt is a total failure. At first we get a brief cameo from Michael J. Fox, who is in some super small indie film called Back to the Future. He's reading Kindred, a story about an African-American woman who time travels back to a pre-Civil War Maryland plantation where she meets her ancestors. Michael, whose character is Mr. Lockhart, posits the main question of this film. If you had that kind of power, time traveling, what would you do? What would you change? It's this question that CJ will be confronted with at the end of Act 1 and the death of her brother. It's at school where we also get to know what CJ's weakness is as a character. She's stubborn, rash, and doesn't take input from anyone else. Her whole conversation with Mr. Lockhart is about how she won't accept her B plus as an acceptable grade. In the next scene, she flies off the handle and attacks her ex-boyfriend, Jared. Later on, Calvin tells her if she would just listen more, maybe she would act right. And finally, her mom tells her that she's just like her father, stubborn. So we know her weakness, stubbornness, and hopefully throughout the journey, she'll move toward her strength, reasonableness, but we'll come back to this in a bit. With her acceptance to MIT hinging on her performance at the Science Expo, CJ and Sebastian fix their machines and successfully travel one full day back in time, making sure not to run into their past selves. If they ran into their past selves, their future selves would then know they succeeded in going back in time, which would screw Screw everything up in the timeline. Confusing, I know. But here we see CJ's stubborn and rash behavior when she throws a slushy at her ex, effectively changing the sequence of events and having Jared break his arm when he's hit by a car. After their ten minutes are up, CJ and Sebastian transport back to present day where they argue about the ethics of time travel. Sebastian argues that time travel could make things even worse, but CJ's stubbornness is quick to put that idea down. It's only when Calvin dies a week later that CJ uses her time machine to stop his murder from happening. The movie does a good job at leaving the viewer in the dark about what happened surrounding Calvin's death. We're told that he was taking out his phone, but the camera cuts before we see the sequence of events. This is a deliberate choice made by the filmmaker showing us how muddy these situations can get when there are no cameras around. We have to rely on eyewitness statements and those of the officers, something that has happened in real life countless times and spurred scorn from groups like Black Lives Matter. CJ devises a way to change the spin of the electrons and create antimatter with enough energy to travel two times the speed of light. This would allow them, theoretically, to go up to a week back in time. And it works, but Jared and his gang stop them before they can reach Calvin. After a brief chase, CJ hears the gunshot in the distance and fails to save her brother. But not to fret, they can try again, this time deciding to stop the robbery at the bodega from happening, the robbery which started the sequence of events which led to Calvin's death. Stop the robbery, stop the death. But there's a problem. They now have two different versions of themselves running around in the past, complicating things further. In order to solve this, they'll need Eduardo's quantum circuit boards, which contain enough energy to splice time entirely, effectively resetting their previous jumps. They travel back in time, and CJ immediately calls the police. Now here's where things start to go downhill. Upon noticing the cops haven't arrived, CJ's stubborn and rash behavior compel her to go into the bodega and notify the owner about the robbery. This completely backfires when past Sebastian arrives and an altercation between the robbers 
results in him getting shot. In turn, this kills future Sebastian, since if he died in the past, he can no longer live in the future. In this new future, Calvin has lived, and Sebastian has died. To make matters worse, Sebastian's grandmother has gone to the hospital suffering from a nervous breakdown. CJ's decisions have only made things worse. With the help of Calvin and Eduardo, they devise a plan to have CJ travel to the exact moment CJ and Sebastian previously jumped, in which she would reset her past self, but not Sebastian's. Is everyone following? My head's about to explode. The plan is to tell Sebastian what happened, then stomp Calvin from getting shot. And even when she shows him the pamphlet of his own funeral and the dog tags only Calvin has, dog tags he said she'd only get over his dead body, they're too late to stop the cops. Sebastian is arrested and Calvin notices the funeral pamphlet turns into Sebastian's funeral. He then decides to sacrifice himself to save Sebastian. We also see him fade away in the present as well. In the present, CJ tells Sebastian the truth, that he had died in the past past and she saved him. But Sebastian's had enough. He tells her they can't do this anymore. But CJ, being the stubborn one, locks him out of the garage and goes in for one last try, as we watch her run down the street. Then it just ends. And here's my main argument about this film. There's no Act 3. There is no ending. We've spent this whole story watching as CJ's stubbornness and rash behavior has led to even more problems. In a normal movie, we would see one of two things happen. Either CJ learns from her behavior, changes, and saves the day, or she doesn't learn from her bad behavior, embraces it even more, and the film would end tragically, with her not learning anything from it. But this film doesn't have either. The ending is open-ended. Did she save him, or did she fail? It's up for you to decide, but my interpretation is that she is doomed to repeat this forever. First, she hasn't learned anything as a character. She's the same old stubborn CJ. Plus, in all her jumps, time has always found a way to correct itself so that someone dies, leading me to believe that no matter what she does, something bad will happen. This unfairness is echoed by Calvin in his talk to CJ, in which he states that no one deserves this. It's his way of saying that sometimes life isn't fair, and we just have to deal with it. Now, if CJ had learned from her past behavior and showed that she was changing as a character, I'd interpret this ending differently. And if that were the case, the filmmakers probably would have been better off actually showing it to give people that happy ending. Overall, I expected her to somehow save her brother, but with no ending, we never get that cathartic release. It just made me more frustrated and wanting to go back in time to get my hour and a half back. But what did you guys think of the ending? Should it have continued on or do you like this open ambiguity of it all? I want to hear your thoughts in the comments below and be sure to like and subscribe. I got more videos on the way and follow me on Twitter at ThinkStoryYT. Until next time, remember, Daddy loves you very much.